Okay, I think you guys know probably the first three formulas I'm going to write down here. Distance, midpoint, slope. All three will be covered there somehow. Distance, midpoint, slope. Not given to you. They won't be on the formula sheet. That is on you on Tuesday. And the fourth one I thought about that you might want to know, throw on an index card, 180 times n minus 2. What is that for, kids? The, in, the sum, the sum of all the interior angles of any polygon. Okay, add up, and what's the end value? Number of sides the polygon has, yes. Okay, so that's all the interior angles added up. Can you think of any others? I could not. I could not other than those four. If you do, let me know during the course of today. All right, what do you got to know the properties of? I'm not going to waste your time. Ready? Oh, parallelogram, definitely. Rectangle. Rhombus. And ready for this one? Kite. I am not writing it down to make your life difficult. It's on there. All right, it's on there. Okay. Uh, notice what I'm not putting up there. What am I not putting up there? Trapezoid. Yeah, here's why. Don't waste your time. Okay, you got other stuff to study for. Don't waste your time. I put square up there, but square is all of these properties. Any property you can think of. All right. Uh, just let me double check on that whole trapezoid business. I'm pretty sure I'm confident on that. I don't see any traps on here, so there you go. You're good. Special vocab. Here's what I mean. Remember these terms? Circumcenter. In center. Anybody remember another one? Centroid, yep. There was a fourth one. Ortho center, but I'm not writing it down. Here's what we should know about them. And if you want to ask, because I'm just writing it down and then having you guys figure it out on your own time. All right, if you want to ask during the review what the answer is, feel free. It's your time. Here's what you should know about it. How is it formed? And what's the special fact about it? All three have a special fact associated with them. All right. How is it formed? What's the special fact? That's what you should know. Definitely know. Go in knowing. All right. And that's really what I had there. All right, just wanted to give you a little heads up on some stuff. I will, wherever you want to go here, topic-wise, if there's a certain question in your review, you want to go over here. Shoot, never mind. Let's add it. Notice I didn't put isosceles trapezoid. Just tr What's the only property of a trapezoid? One pair of opposite sides parallel. Done. Okay. All right. Nika, you're up. What do you got for me? Okay. Are we, we're, uh, let's, on a graph. Because I won't have you prove a rectangle statement's reasons. So we're on a graph. Yes. Yes, correct. Okay. That's the only way, though, oh, okay. to show it's a rectangle without saying a parallelogram. All right. Okay, so let me just go over. 
Let me go over that right now. So the question was, you I have you graph a figure. It says prove a rectangle. There are three ways you can do it. One way is prove four right angles. Okay, you can prove four right angles. The other way, the other two ways though, you need to show it's a parallelogram with a little extra. Anybody know what the little extras are? A parallelogram with what makes a rectangle? One right, you don't need to show four, one right angle. Yep. And what do you know about diagonals of a rectangle? With congruent diagonals. So those are the three ways. Like I just told you though, there's only one way to do it without proving it a parallelogram though. Okay. Good question. Hi, Claudia. What's up? Review number two, number four, everybody. You got it. All righty. Got it. Let's cut and paste this sucker. Again, everybody, review number two, number four. Everyone got calculators ready to roll if you need it. Some of you may have done these already, which is great, but if you haven't, get some calculators going. Uh, if I, everybody, if I forget, please remind me to hand out the extra midterm review before we leave today. All right, because I'm hoping you guys are going to show up tomorrow and Friday, but that's not a guarantee, so I'll get it to you now. All right, ready? Uh, right triangle, angle B, 34 degrees right here, 34. And it tells me DC is an angle bisector. Somebody tell me what two angles are congruent. If DC is an angle bisector, where are the two congruent angles? Let's go, Remy. Okay. Everyone agree, right? Those, those two. Angle bisector cuts an angle into two equal ones. All right. How can I find all of angle C right now? I'm not getting to the question yet, but how can I find angle B, C, A? Right angle, 34 degrees. How can I find all of it? Madeline, what do you got for me? Subtract both of these from 180. Got it. So how big is angle C? How much? 56, okay. I don't have my calculator on me. 56 degrees, and then what do I have to do now? Split it in half. So 56 cut in half. 28, so each of these are 28, 28. What's the question asking me, by the way? ADC, okay, I haven't done it yet. ADC, haven't found it. But now what can I do? 180 minus 90 minus 28 will give me 60. Two degrees. Okay. You good there, Claudia? Okay, Anthony and then Nika, you're on deck. Number three now. Whew, this one is nasty, let me tell you. This one is no joke. Uh, all right, AD is congruent to BD. Is uh, different colors here. There we go. Congruent to DC. All right, I don't want to read any of the uh, problem now. If these three are congruent, does anybody know what I could call point D? A vocabulary term to call point D, a point that is equidistant from the sides of a triangle. A point that is equidistant from the sides of a triangle. This is why we're reviewing. In center. Okay, it's called the in center. Okay, let's keep going though. What's an in center do? In center is formed how? The intersection of the angle bisectors. Yes, we got to know that to do that problem because going back, 
now that I know that's an in center, BX, well, anyway, AD, YD, and ZD are all angle bisectors. They're cutting the angles in half. So all three angles of triangle XYZ are being cut in half, everybody. All right, are we okay on getting to that point? It's an in center. Why? Because it's equidistant from the sides. How's an in center formed again? Angle bisectors. This is where we're going next Tuesday. And I know you guys can roll your eyes and shake your head at me, but you got to understand you have to prepare for this much, much more than a single unit test. This is six unit tests. All right, six unit tests. All right, not one. So you got to prepare a little more than just for one. All right, so now that I know they're angle bisectors, I got AXC. The entire angle is 4X plus 6. The entire angle. AXD is X plus 7. Can you guys set up an equation for me? Because these are not equal. Those are not equal. Can you add something to my equation to make them equal? What's happening to angle AXC again? It's being bisected, right? So these two angles are congruent. Add something to my equation. Claudia, I can multiply by 2, or I can add on another x plus 7 if I want. Because if this is x plus 7, that angle's x plus 7. They're congruent. It's being bisected. All right, going now, 2x plus 14 equals 4x plus 7. 2x equals, okay, what did I do here? 4x plus 6, one job. equals 8, x equals 4. All right, here's where I'm going to get fired up again, too. Tuesday, be disciplined enough that when you find the variable, you're going to be disciplined enough to take a second, stop, go back to the problem, and say, what am I looking for? Because I want you to circle 4 right now, choice 1. Because you found x, everyone thinks we're ready to go. Be disciplined on Tuesday to take a breath, and go back and say, what am I looking for in this problem? Am I looking for X? No, I'm looking for DXC. If, what do I know about DXC? It's same as X plus 7. So I'm looking for 4 plus 7. That's what I'm looking for, 11. I want you to circle choice 1, though. Be disciplined. All right, to go back, when you find a variable, to go back, take a breather, and say, is this really what my answer should be? Whew. What do you got for me? Number one, yes. Why is it angle, angle, side? Okay. Thank you for choosing this, because this is going to remind me to tell you guys something else you're allowed to bring, in addition to the supplies I told you yesterday. You can bring those if you want. Highlighters, colored pencils, markers. Okay, in addition, to, that's not, I'm not requiring that. That is optional if you want. If you use them during the course of the year, you want to keep using them, that's fine. You can bring them to the midterm and use them. All right, see the two, over, they're two overlapping ones, right? All right, so uh, they tell me that these lines are parallel to each other, both sets of lines. All right. Uh, right now, do you see a side they have in common? They have ZY in common. So there's my reflexive side. I cannot do any other sides, though. Parallel lines don't make congruent sides. Okay. So this reflexive side is the only one I can use as far as the side go. Now, remember the type of angles that are formed by parallel lines. Alternate interior angles, right? Okay. So now, do I have the right triangles? W, Z, Y? I don't. No one's going to tell me that. I don't even have the right triangles there, Nico. We're going to tell me that. <coughs> Try this again. And it's the top one here. 
w x y there we go all right all right now tell me the side they have in common W Y. All right. All right. There's the side in common. Uh, all right. Let's start with these two lines being parallel. Everyone remembers alternate interior angles. Ready? Watch the ones I mark. Everyone see this angle that's in my blue one and this one that's in my yellow one. Everyone agrees those are alternate interior. All right. It also told me the other sides were parallel. So now you could say these alternate, let's see, where am I going to go? Yep, these right here. These two are alternate interior. And ready, if you cover up one of the triangles, I have the, this angle and I have this angle. You see how the reflexive side's in between them. So that's why I needed to pick angle side angle. That's the only thing I had available to me. Okay. Next up, topics, questions, whatever you want. Make sure it's a serious question and not just because it looks tough and I haven't done it yet. Anything else? Because if not, I'm going to give you the rest of the time to work. Billy. I remember the part one where it told you what the one was called. You were going to ask? You had one job to remind me to start class that way, Maddie. Well, we're getting it done now, right? Did you figure it out or you still got a question on it? Okay. All right, we're ready to go. Write the equation of the perpendicular bisector for this line. Uh, what's a bisector do? So this line's going to cut it in half, meaning it's going to go through the what of HI. It's going to go through the midpoint of HI. Formula. Midpoint of HI. Ready? Add your X's. 1 plus 9 divided by 2. Add your y's, 5 plus 1 divided by 2. Midpoint of hi, 5, 3. So it's going to go through 5, 3. Uh, what's perpendicular mean? It's going to form a? OK, what do you know? If I have two lines that should be perpendicular, what should I know about their slopes? Okay, can anybody find the slope of HI for me? So go ahead if you haven't already. Up and over how many to get HI? Up and over how many for HI? How, up and over how many? Four over? Eight, and it's going downhill, so four over, so negative one half, I'll reduce it down, negative one half. So can anybody tell me what should be the slope of my perpendicular bisector then? Should be the negative, re so flip and change the sign. The slope of the bisector should be plus two. So I need the equation of a line that's got a slope of 2 and goes through 5, 3. I'm glad you asked this, Billy, because here you go, everyone. There's a lot of writing equations of lines on this midterm. All right, a lot of writing equations of lines. You have your slope. What's the only value I need to write the equation? B, y-intercept, the B value. And you can get that by using y equals mx plus b. Help me fill it in now. What's a y-coordinate this bisector is going to go through? y-coordinate. 3 equals, what's the slope of the bisector? 2, x-coordinate it goes through. 5 plus b. Solve for b. 
3 equals 10 plus b. Move the 10 over. What's the b value? Yep, negative 7. And now you just combine the two. The equation of the perpendicular bisector, y equals 2x minus 7. There is a lot of writing equations of lines on there. Okay, a lot. Good, Billy? Better, Matt? Okay. What's up, John? Yep. Yep. Angle D, everyone, angle DAC is equal to angle B plus angle C added up. Which means, let's keep digging a little bit deeper because I know this is on the midterm. Angle DAC is bigger than angle B by itself and it's bigger by angle C by itself. Okay, yes. Yep, you are correct. Anything else here, or I could just let you guys work. That's fine too. Anything else before I let you go to work then? Okay, uh, I'll let you go to work. Uh, while you're working, hey, listen up. I'm gonna hand out the extra midterm review. Those answers are also on Aspen. Okay, Those, the extra midterm review is also on Aspen. Okay, yes, I will allow you to work with other people, but you know the deal. It better be on math and nothing else. Keep the phones away. All right, get a Chromebook out to look up the answer key. All right, don't use your phones. And of course, call me over with 